All right, in this video, I'm going to break down a six marker level of response question involving transition metal complexes, isomerism, all that good stuff from an AQA A-level chemistry pass paper. So attempt the question yourself, see how you do, see where you need to fine tune your revision, go over certain parts of the topic. Repetition is king, guys. If you've already done this question from a past paper, it was from paper one, June 2019. If you've already done it, do it again, all right? Fine tune that revision. So let's look at this question then. So transition metal complexes have different shapes and many show isomerism. Describe the different shapes of complexes and show how they lead to different types of isomerism. And we have to use examples of cobalt two and platinum two complexes, and we should draw the structures, okay? So level of response then, what I'm gonna do is, I often just give my students the advice of follow the order of the question and mirror that with your response. So what do they want us to do first? They want us to describe the different shapes of complexes. And secondly, so I'm gonna label that one. Secondly, show how they lead to different types of isomerism. All right, and we have to use examples of cobalt and platinum, and we should draw our structures. So how I would look at this, if this popped up in my exam is, first, I would just give a brief paragraph describing the different shapes, um, using these as an example, and then I would draw some examples of that, okay? And then once I'd done that, I would move on to point two, which is showing how they lead to isomerism, and I would draw those as well. So let's jump straight into this then. Okay, so there's three main shapes within transition metal topic in AQA that we have to think about here. So what are those going to be? All right, so transition metal complexes can form octahedral. That'll be our first point. Tetrahedral, second shape. And the last one, can you think of it? Some students don't remember this one. Square planar. Okay. And this all depends on which ligands are bonding. All right, so first paragraph out of the way, we've described the different shapes that we have here. Easy peasy. So now comes the more tricky part and the more time consuming part where we have to draw our structures. So what I'm going to do first is do our octahedral complex that we just uh, highlighted here. All right, so cobalt is what I'm going to start with. We've got our six bonds for our octahedral structure. So we're going to have two uh, dashes going into the page and two wedges coming out of the page. All right, so shade those guys in going to be a bit shabby but hopefully that's all right for you now you can put any monodentate ligands you want here okay i obviously there's only two options really because chlorides wouldn't lead to a octahedral shape so you can pick ammonia or you can make water molecules i'm just going to go with classic water okay so i'm going to draw all those in water 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 okay now make sure with these sort of questions you always show the 3d orientation of the bonds whoever is coming towards us going away from us or in the same plane as us and always 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 show your square brackets all right and then chuck in the charge okay we're going to have a two plus charge because we've got a cobalt two plus ion all right so that's our first complex done i'm going to just label that as octahedral right here so next up is going to be our tetrahedral okay so in this case i'm going to use our cheeky cobalt again because that's the one they've asked for then I'm going to draw our chloride ions, okay? All right, so easy as that. Put in your chloride ions and then square brackets. Now we've gone from a cobalt 2 plus. We've put four 1 minus ions on there, so it's going to ultimately give us a 2 minus complex, okay? Um, color this in. Whoop. I'm going to leave that a bit dodgy, but hopefully that's all right. And tetra hedral okay that's our shape there last up is going to be our square planar okay so for our square planar i'm going to use our platinum two plus okay now this should be common knowledge at this point okay so cis platinum is what i'm going to go for and then we can also use that in our example of the isomerism so i'm going to draw our two ammonias uh, let's draw all the bonds first and then whoop color that in nh3 nh3 CL, CL. All right, and that's our um, square planar. I'm going to label that as square planar right there. So some of you may be thinking to yourself, why hasn't he put the square brackets in? It's because there's no charge, guys. So if there's no charge, we don't need to write down the square brackets, all right? So that's our first point done. We've described the shapes of different complexes and we've drawn the structures, all right? So that should be all good to go. Next up, we have to look at the different types of isomerism that can be exhibited in these complexes. So first off, 
I'm just going to talk about cis trans isomerism, okay? All right, so we've written that up and I added a little piece of key information here. It depends on the 3D orientation of the bonded ligands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the structures out and then sort of explain myself a little bit, okay? So as always, they've asked us to specifically use cobalt 2 plus and platinum. So those are exactly the complexes I'm going to use. So first off, let's do our cobalt then. Now, draw these in. This is always the tedious stage of drawing all the bonds out. So let's draw in our water molecules to begin with. I'm just going to start with that. So then with octahedral complexes, when we have four of the same monodentate ligand, and then we have two different monodentate ligands, for example, I'm just going to use a chloride ion here. We actually get cis trans isomerism. Okay, this is a geometric isomerism that exists. Um, don't write EZ. Okay, you can be tempted to write EZ isomerism. Just associate that with alkenes only. This is cis trans isomerism, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw our other isomer here. Uh, let's draw these out, this out. Should probably copy and paste these, should I make it a bit quicker? Um, now, what I'm gonna do, instead of having the chloride ions opposite on the molecule, which would make it a trans isomer, because it's on opposite sides of the complex, I'm gonna put them on the same side, okay, right here. And then I'm gonna shift our water molecules over to be on the other side. Okay, now I don't need to denote a charge here because we have a cobalt two plus bonded to two chloride ions, so the charges are gonna neutralize themselves. Now this is on opposite sides of the molecule. All right, you can see they're on opposite sides. This side, they're on the same side of the molecule, okay? Even though one's going away from us, the ones coming towards us, they're still on the same side regarding their 3D orientation. So I would label that as a cis isomer right there. Now we can actually get the same thing. I'm gonna actually label this as octahedral just to cover ourselves here. Next up is gonna look at square planar. So I'm gonna do that right here, square planar. All right, and what we're gonna have here is our cis and trans platin. I think that's the easiest example because you can just pull it out the hat straight away. So platinum, gonna put our bonds here going away coming towards us now across the molecule okay so i'm going to do our trans isomer first chloride on one side chloride on the opposite side on the other side of the platinum next is our nh3 h3n sorted all right next up is going to be our other isomer so i'm going to label this our trans isomer and next up it's just going to be our cis so it's going to be where both of the bonded different bonded groups are going to be on the same side of the molecule all right, so I'm gonna put our ammonias up here and our chloride ions down here, okay? And that's our cis isomer. So what have we done here? So different types of isomerism. So far, we've only covered uh, the cis trans isomerism, so that's perfect. So we have to think to ourselves, what is the other type of isomerism that is present in the transition metal topic? Okay, that's going to be optical isomerism. Hopefully you guys knew that. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just written out a really brief sentence here. So I said that octahedral complexes can form optical isomers. And then what I did is I led into the definition of what an optical isomer is in the transition metal topic, okay? So it's just a non-superimposable mirror image of one another. So in all these examples, we're always going to have to show both isomers, okay? We can't just be like, it forms cis trans isomerism and then chuck a trans isomer on the page and not draw the, the cis isomer. We are gonna have to do the exact same thing with the optical isomers, all right? So I'm gonna expand upon this a little bit. So although optical isomers can form with octahedral complexes, they can only form with specific bidentate ligands being involved. Okay, and can you remember what the names of those bidentate ligands are? In these level of response questions, to gain those five, six marks, okay, those top marks, we really want to be as accurate as possible with our chemistry terminology. So anytime you can show off name molecules, it always helps you gain as many marks as possible, okay? So think to yourself, what are the bidentate ligands? Okay, so I'm gonna put them here. So I'm gonna say, for example, ethane dioate. Okay, that's our first one. I'm gonna give the formula as well, C2O42 minus ligand, as well as our ethane one two diamine. Okay, ethane one whoops, comma two diamine. Alright, next up is gonna draw the formula of that. So NH2, CH2, CH2, NH2. 
All right, so those are the bidentate ligands involved, which can lead to the formation of optical isomers. Last thing I'm going to do, just like they asked us to do, is draw the structures. Okay, so I've moved everything up the page a bit because I was running dangerously low on space. Let's go for a nice red here. So octahedral then. So I'm going to focus on our cobalt 2 complex again. So cobalt, let's draw in all the bonds. Okay. Not too bad. All right, so what I'm going to do here is just draw our ethane dioate. So you can pick either ligand you want. You can pick the ethane dioate or the ethane 1, 2 diamine. It's up to you. All right, so let's draw those in then. So I'm going to draw the oxygen bonded portion first, and then we'll draw everything else after. So oxygen's in. Now let's draw the ethane backbones in. So, whoop, and then our double bonded oxygen's on here. We'll do that for each of these, okay? Like I said, super dangerously low on space. We're going to square bracket this up, okay, because it has a charge. Each ethane dioate, as we can see, has a 2 minus. So ultimately, if we have a 2 plus, 2, 2 minuses, it's going to lead to a 2 minus charge. All right, now with these optical isomers, we just have to do a mirror image of one another, okay? And we also have to make sure that whichever bond direction you drew here, so we have a dash line going away from us and a wedge coming towards us, you have to mirror that in the image, okay? As well as the bond direction, the orientation of the bilentate ligand is really important. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll expand upon that in a second. Let's just draw this out. So because we've done this one facing towards the right-hand side, obviously in the mirror image, we have to do it facing the left. So I'm going to do that right here. Then this one's top left. So I'm going to do it top right. Hopefully this is just second nature to you guys, but I'm just sort of explaining myself a little bit. And then bracket it up. Oops, shabby brackets. Oop, hopefully that's a bit better. Two minus. There we go. So just imagine there's some imaginary mirror right here. So a nice dashed line all the way up. This is our mirror. Okay, so it's a complete mirror image. As long as you get a hang of that, it should be all good to go. So here's the mark scheme, guys, and the examiner's report. Let's quickly look through this. Now, I'm not going to go through the mark scheme too much. Hopefully, you can just pause the video, go through it yourself, see if I messed up anywhere. Maybe I did. Um, hopefully not and see where you went wrong or where you need to improve, okay? So let's go through this real quick. So first off, octahedral or six coordinate diagram, exactly the same thing, okay? Octahedral complexes are gonna involve six coordinate bonds, tetrahedral or square planar. So they allow both or, okay? I put both on the page just to be safe, which is what I would recommend you guys to do, okay? Just ch chuck, literally chuck all the information on the page possible. All right, next up, cis trans isomers in either square planar and or octahedral. Okay, now to get as many marks, even though they said all here, to get all six marks, we want to be showing that we, we know what we're talking about, all right? So put everything on the page. Diagram showing cis and trans isomers in square planar. Diagram showing cis and trans in both isomers in octahedral complexes. Okay, now here they put the example of four water molecules, two hydroxides, or four ammonia, two water molecules, completely fine. As long as it's four of one monodentate and two of another, you should be fine with that, as long as it's not like random monodentate ligands but yeah you get the idea next up um what we've got here optical isomerism um they've even added in the cheeky definition here so that's good um occurs with specific bidentate ligands ethane diate or so these are the only bidentate ligands within the aqa or any any example really for a level chemistry so just remember those two and you should be fine um then we have to draw both the optical isomers okay so they've asked us to draw if they ask us to do something just make sure you do it okay so what does the examiner's report say then so students often scored well on this level of response Wee, that's good all right so shapes of complexes were well known and most students scored the first two marks geometric isomerism in square planar platinum complexes was well known so this should be just standard because we need to know the details and the structure of cis of cis platin so that should be all good cis trans isomerism in octahedral complexes was less well known so this isn't really take me by surprise you often forget about this okay if you think of octahedral most students will just think of optical okay but just remember that we can get the cis trans isomers formed as well so optical isomerism in octahedral complexes with biodentate ligands was less well understood okay so honestly 
don't get um, too confused with this topic guys just remember that it has to be a perfect mirror image okay if we go into the right here the mirror image has to go to the left if we go into the top left mirror image top right and just make sure that you've got the appropriate bonds of the 3d orientation whether it's going away from us coming towards us and just match that okay well oh, didn't realize didn't color that in i don't really think they care do they if you color it in or not so last point then students fail to score full marks by giving an incorrect formula of a bidentic ligand or not drawing both stereoisomers. So if you are going for those six markers, always try and be in as accurate as possible, okay? This formula right here, just try and remember these two off by heart. Shouldn't be too difficult. Once you've drawn them a few times, should be fine. Next thing, not drawing both stereoisomers. So just like I said earlier, guys, if you draw one isomer, always have to draw the other one. Draw one, draw the other one. Right here, especially with optical, okay? You can't show one optical isomer and expect to get any sort of marks here. So. That's the end of the video. Hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully you learned a thing or two or just brushed up on some certain techniques here, okay? Some of you may be thinking, bullet points, what the hell is he doing? Bullet points are fine, guys, for a level of response, okay? It's not an essay question. It's just a level of response. So you should be fine with that. Now, if you did learn something, like the video. It really helps the channel grow. Subscribe for future maths and science content. Best of luck in your exams, guys. Peace.